This is the Mazda 3. It's one of the sportiest small cars that you can buy because it shares a lot of its architecture with Mazda's other fun cars, including some of its bones with the MX-5 sports car. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through the 2023 Mazda 3 hatchback and show you what this car gets right, but also what it could do a little bit better. And we're gonna find out together whether this is the best small car that you can buy in Singapore right now. One of the things that the Mazda 3 continues to get so right is its interior. The hybrid does pick up a few nice features like a power driver's seat and full keyless entry with push button start. All cars get push button start, but not where you can just grab the door handle and open it. But one weird quirk is that the hybrid system really drives up the price for less money than this car, you can actually get the G20 Touring, which has leather seats as well. And I know some people like those. Not only is the material better, they're shapely, supportive. The electric adjustment is really generous. The driving position is low. The steering wheel feels great. Leather wrapped steering wheel with paddle shifters and metal accents. So the ergonomics are beautiful and everything falls right to hand from these knurled tactile climate control switches to the rotary controller for the MZD Connect infotainment system, which is not a touchscreen. So a lot of people don't like that. It's subjective. You can tell me below in the comments what you reckon. But many of the materials in here are far more plush than what you'll find in rival cars like the Kia Cerato or even the Mark 8 Golf, which is crazy. Soft on the dash, on the doors, even where your leg rests. The Mazda 3 feels more like an Audi than a Volkswagen. And that's one thing that we love about this car, particularly because the price continues to be really fair. However, the CarPlay isn't wireless. The standard stereo is just okay. And only the top of the range gets the Bose. And storage could be a little bit better, though I like this trick opening and folding center armrest here. Your backseat passengers will need to duck their head as they get in under this slinky little roof line, but once they do, they'll find that the Mazda 3 hatch has a generous enough backseat. It's certainly pretty cozy back here and dark because the seats are dark gray and the headliner is black, which is sporty, but it does make you feel a bit more closed in. However, the room on offer is sufficient for adults. I'm six foot, this seat's in my driving position. Uh, legroom is good, there's a bit of a cutout for backseat knees. Headroom is actually fine, which is surprising, and toe room is decent. I can feel the seat, but it's okay. Now in a very, very pinch, you could get someone in the middle seat here, but it's not super generous. But I think for like a weekend away with friends, four adults in this car will go fine, but the boot might not have space for all their stuff. You do get air vents here in the back. The materials are actually, wow, that's, I was not expecting that. They're still soft here in the back. And you do get an armrest here as well with two cup holders, which is nice and generous. So it's got a big car feel in the second row. So there's not too many small cars where it's quite difficult to go wrong, no matter which engine or transmission you pick. But the Mazda 3 is kind of one of those cars. You would just choose a bigger engine if you wanted to go a bit faster. At least it sounds actually quite cool while it's going because this engine has a pretty rorty exhaust note. And in actual fact, it's the engine shared with the MX-5, although that car doesn't get the mild hybrid system yet, although it probably is coming soon. So engine wise, the Mazda 3 is pretty well sorted. In terms of ride and handling though, it's important to note that the Mazda 3 is definitely a little bit more biased towards sporty driving than a lot of other small cars. And that's particularly evident from the ride, which is always firm. That's not usually a problem because the dampers are pretty well adjusted in the Mazda 3, but occasionally you'll hit a bump, particularly at low speeds, something like a bit of road which has come away and it can be quite jarring and abrupt through to the cabin. So you're always feeling what's going on on the road, but most of the time it's not uncomfortable. It's just reminding you that this is actually a fairly sporty car. And of course, that's something that a lot of people really like about the Mazda 3. And it's something I like about it too, because on a back road, it really comes alive with lovely steering. It's a little bit heavier steering than some rivals have, but of course, that does make you feel like it's a little bit more athletic, I suppose. And it's got a great chassis. It really works with you as a driver. It's actually a really nice thing to drive. I think it feels more interesting from behind the wheel than something like an i30. Although vehicles like the Volkswagen Golf and even the Toyota Corolla continue to be good competition for this car from a driving dynamics perspective. Now the Mazda 3 is pretty quiet. It's pretty refined. Um, people like me used to whinge a lot about Mazdas being really loud and that's something that the company put a lot of work into about five years ago and since that point the cars have actually been 
remarkably quiet and this is one of those vehicles it's remarkably refined inside now in terms of safety features it's pretty well equipped um, out of the factory you've got stuff like aeb you've got adaptive cruise control but you can also go for a vision package which is going to add things like a 360 degree camera and semi-autonomous driving at low speeds for traffic jams which is quite a handy feature to have as well now visibility in the hatch could be a lot better that's because of those pretty luscious looking pillars back there you can tell they look pretty thick and that's how they appear from the driver's seat the sedan's a little bit better in that regard and another thing that's kind of important to think about with the sedan is it's actually a little bit softer at the front end a bit more tuned for american tastes than european tastes and so if you want a slightly more comfortable mazda 3 then you're going to want to go for the sedan in this case so that's our opinion of the 2023 mazda 3 still one of the best small cars you can buy if you like a fun drive as well as the practical size and the handling is really sporty so if what you really want is a Mazda MX-5 convertible but you kind of need that pesky back seat and boot well this thing is a really good option that's my opinion you can share yours down below in the comments